So there's one thing that overrules everything else when reviewing technology, and that's that you look at devices from a broad perspective and not just one's own. These things are starting to become really popular and I'm starting to see why. This is the HP NV 2-in-1 and it's an awesome little machine. So, when this little machine turned up in our studio, the first thing I did was load all of my usual programs onto it. These are some lighter apps, for example Spotify for music streaming, and although this is a 13 inch, I wanted to see how it was going to handle some heavier workloads. So I went ahead and installed the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite, as well as some higher end games, which I just completely didn't think would run on this little machine at all. More on that later. Starting things out with the hardware, this machine is super thin and lightweight. It's that thin, in fact, that the hinge actually has some clever trickery going on to make sure that it can both be sturdy and rotate a full 360 degrees around. Because, yes, and before we get into this, this is a two-in-one. So, depending on how you look at it, this thing can be a full-fledged tablet or a laptop or both. And I think that's something really important to keep in mind as we go forward here. As far as connectivity is concerned, you've got a 3.5mm combi microphone headphone jack, a micro SD card slot, along with two USB-A and two USB-C ports. I'm not sure about you, but I do, however, find myself worrying less and less about the available ports on my hardware, as Wi-Fi is getting so much better and everything connects over Bluetooth nowadays, all the way from mice and keyboards to headphones and audio interfaces. And should I remind you that Thunderbolt docks exist. I love just being able to rock up to my big desk with this small baby laptop plug in one USB-C cable and the entire desk comes to life with my keyboard mouse monitor connected all in 4K as well as my audio equipment all whilst the laptop's battery is charging up. This tablet, yes technically it's a tablet, is powering my entire desk with a 4K screen, mouse and keyboard, audio hardware, all through one cable. Now I know this isn't anything new, but the fact this laptop is so small and it basically is a tablet is mind-blowing to me. Now this is when I started to notice the power of these new Intel chips. This specifically being the 12th generation i7-1250. Granted, it is only running at just over one gigahertz, but stick around because, well, I'll show you what this thing is capable of. Whilst powering my external 4K display at, yes, 120 hertz, I'd like to add, this little machine was able to scrub through the timeline of a Premiere Pro project for one of our recent videos with, yes, the resolution set to half, and this did really impress me. Now, don't get me wrong for a second, I wouldn't want to sit here with this laptop and do back-to-back -back 4K renders out of Premiere Pro, but for the quick odd fix here and there, or just throwing some stuff together in a timeline at half playback, this machine did it fine. It almost did it too fine. And I do think that is a testament to the Intel's UHD graphics here. The fact that I can quickly disconnect this machine from my entire desk and turn it into a tablet is completely bonkers to me. A tablet that was just running my Premiere Pro timeline whilst I was editing in 4K is now a full-fledged tablet with a pen that I can draw with. Talk about multifunctionality. Speaking of tablet mode, yes, this thing does come with a pen. And I'll say the obvious here, I am no artist. But whilst I was using the pen, it did seem to work really well for quick sketches and doodles and for something more towards my use case, generally just taking notes of things. It's made out of plastic, however, it does feel substantial and it charges over a hidden USB-C port. 
I mainly used the pen for navigating around Windows and the web, and it also worked fine doing this with no issues to report. Windows 11, if you didn't know, is also well optimized for touch input. So unlike Windows 10, now using it in tablet mode doesn't feel like a soddy afterthought. Flipping things back around, see what I did there? <laughs> Another thing I'm sure a lot of people will get a machine like this for is to reply to emails and type messages with an actual physical keyboard. I'm happy to report that I really do like the keyboard on this laptop. The keys have a good amount of travel and the right amount of mushiness so much that they're not too mushy but feel really comfortable for typing long emails and documents. The fact that there is a slight bit of chassis flex and the arrow keys are laid out like this may annoy some people, but I would attribute that to the story of how thin and light and small this machine actually is. So this part for me is where I really started to get interested in this machine. Doing this isn't usually something I would do on a laptop of this form factor being 13 inch. However, I installed one of my favorite games, Apex Legends, to see how this machine would handle it and if it would even run. I was completely shocked that the Envy managed to get a consistent 50 frames per second in Apex with, yes, granted all of the graphics set to low. However, I wasn't even expecting the game to run and when I saw 50 FPS I ran to get my closest wireless Xbox controller as I realized this laptop wasn't even connected to power whilst I was testing this. Even with higher end gaming laptops, it is a necessity that you have the power plug connected whilst you're playing games. Otherwise the GPU isn't allowed to pull as much power from the battery. And with this MV, basically it's clear to see that the Intel graphics can pull maximum power from the battery even when the power plug is disconnected. Making this basically a really fun portable gaming machine when you're away from home and fancy a quick one. I don't think I've ever been able to play Apex Legends while sat out in my garden before, and even if I ever could, the last machine I would have expected to do that on would have been an HP NV 2 in one Now even though we can sit here and play outside I don't think we'd really want to, as the 13.3 inch 1920 by 1200 touchscreen comes with a max brightness of around 400 nits. And that really isn't bright enough for viewing in direct sunlight. And yeah, it'll be okay in a pinch, but I wouldn't want to sit here and do lots of reading off this screen in the outdoors with the sun shining. On this though, the screen is plenty sharp enough and covers 100% of the Adobe sRGB color space for you graphics artists out there who are thinking of getting this machine. Some other notable features I'd like to mention as well, you've got Windows Hello facial recognition built in. The webcam quality and the microphone quality is okay for your quick zoom call every now and again. And Bang & Olsen have slapped their name on the audio system inside of this laptop. Bit of a strange partnership because you'd be silly to expect high-end audio from a device that is this small. So Alex, what's the bottom line on the NV2 in one? I really like this thing. It's completely opened my eyes to how cool this two in one market is going to be over the next few years. And I think that's a massive testament as to how well optimized these chips are getting inside of them. So much so that this thing can one second be a lightweight tablet in my hand whilst I'm using an included pen with it. And then the next minute I can plug it into my desk with one cable and light up a 4K 120 hertz screen and start editing my 4K timelines in Premiere Pro. I think that is absolutely nuts. And if you'd have said that was coming to me a couple years back, I would have got really, really excited. This is the thing, it's happening now and you can buy these right now. My name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.